This here is Moose, and this is Moose's roadmap to success. We just got done doing the video, the counter conditioning video outside. I'm gonna try to distract him with his bully stick. He's gonna be chewing on this later. Um, all right, so basically, in my estimation, uh, Moose's big problem is he thinks that his job is to be in charge of security for his guardians, and uh, he doesn't need to be. And there's a couple of things that I think led him to this. Um, the house kind of overlooks the street, and it's got a big bay window, and the couch is kind of backed up to it. So I think one of the things he likes to do is just sit on the back of the couch and just stare outside. When somebody comes by, he barks at them like crazy. So in order to shift the leader-follower dynamic, I know this isn't super comfortable for you. How about this? Is that a little bit better? Um, what we want to do is start incorporating rules and boundaries so the guardians can practice acting like leaders, at least based on his perspective. So some of the rules we went over are not being allowed on the couch for 30 days or as long as he's being dog reactive. And then after that, couch only with invitation and permission and only for good behavior. So if he's on the couch and he starts barking, he has to get down. Um, other rules be not being allowed to be on the carpet in front of the couch when people are eating food uh, at the table in front of the couch. Not being allowed in the kitchen, but that shouldn't be a problem. He actually doesn't like the kitchen. Um, having to sit before we let him out of the door. We go to the door and we say sit once. If he doesn't sit within about three seconds, we walk away. Don't say it multiple times. And then we wait one minute, then go back to the door. And use it, Alexa or uh, Siri and give you a timer when you're doing this. Alexa's lit, just lit up. Um, so that you, because you, you'll forget the, the time. Uh, each time you walk away, double length of time. First one minute, then two minute, then four minute, then eight minute. Eventually, what will happen is he'll go sit at the door as his way of indicating he wants to go outside. The way he figures that out is as soon as his butt hits the ground, you open the door. At first, do it going out, but then do it in and out. Um, so another uh, good rule or way to add structure is to ask them to sit before you cross any street is also a good thing to do. And on the walks, it's not a bad idea to carry some treats with you and every once in a while randomly stop for no reason, ask them to sit, give them a treat, and then continue walking. This way when you actually see dogs or somebody you want to talk to, he's accustomed to sitting down, sitting in his more subordinate position. One thing I forgot to mention the Guardians is they should get in the habit of not walking around him. Leaders defer, do not defer to followers. So if he's here and I walk around him, I'm burning extra energy to defer around him. Instead, I should walk through him. If he's asleep, I'm gonna walk around him. But if he's standing there, just we need to come up with a choreography. So if I'm walking to the, to the kitchen he's, and the human's coming, my job as a dog is to move out of the human's way, right? Yeah. There you go. Um, okay, so other rules, um, let me see. Uh, well, those are some examples of rules. We also wanna look for ways to delay gratification. If he likes to play fetch, we're gonna make him sit before we throw the ball. Um, he likes to shove balls at people to uh, get them to play fetch with him, visitors. So what I would do is I would t uh, have, and this is kind of something I showed off camera, but basically when he brought me the ball, I didn't react at all. And I, uh, eventually I told him to, uh, to drop, and it, uh, or any, once he dropped, I took the ball, and I told him to sit. He didn't sit, I just continued talking. As soon as he sit, I threw the ball. So by doing that consistently, then he realizes as soon as I sit, that's what gets the ball thrown. But right now, jumping up on people seems to get attention. And this is one of the problems that I see a lot of my clients have is we focus on the things the dog does wrong. For dogs, good attention from the humans and bad attention from the humans is pretty much about the same thing. So if I jump up on you, I get attention, and I sit in front of you politely and I get no attention, I'm going to start jumping up more because that's what gets me the attention. So this is what led me to what I call passing, uh, petting with a purpose and passive training. Petting with a purpose is uh, if he demands attention, nudges, really jumps up on people or scratches, instead of doing what he wants, we're gonna name a counter order, tell him to sit. When he sits, we're gonna pet him under his chin and say the word sit and only the word sit. And also say it like sit, don't say sit, because you see how that's different for dogs that hear inflection. So uh, we wanna reinforce just whatever the command word is. After a while, what will happen is he's gonna have him sit in front of you as his way of prepaying for attention. And make sure when he does that, we do recognize and appreciate that and pet him and say the word sit. Otherwise, he's going to go back to jumping up for the other things that got him attention. That also leads me to what I call pet, uh, passive training. Passive training is just simply waiting for him to do something we want. I know, buddy. We're almost done. And uh, all right, well, let's take it down. Um, and then as soon as he does something that I want, I'm going to pet him. So if he comes to me, I'm going to pet him and say come. If he sits down near me, I'm going to pet him and say sit. If he lays down near me, I'm going to pet him and say chill because that's his new word to lay down. So by recognizing and appreciating the skill, the things that he does that we like, he's going to be emulating those desired behaviors more and more frequently. And eventually you'll have guests come over and he's going to go sit in front of the guest saying, I'm sitting sucker, why aren't you petting me? Come. That's a perfect example of a passive training. Um, all right. Um, we went over the escalating consequences uh, and those are the ways to uh, disagree with uh, the dog when he breaks the rules. And those are the four escalating consequences. Message me if you figure out what they are and I can go over a review with them for you. Um, use those to ask uh, to do the uh, uh, to enforce the rules consistently. 
Um, let me see what else. Um, I went through a focus exercise. Remember when you do it, one second, one second at first. Eventually it's one second, 20 seconds for the second movement only. Don't hold it up here. Let me go one, and then hold it up here for a while, and then start going. If you hold it up here, that's gonna create a, a jumping up uh, behavior from the dog. So boom, boom. And then say the word focus after it goes in his mouth. Remember when you're doing the focus, and there are videos on my website that show I edited the focus, so go there if you forgot the instructions. But remember, you got to work up to 20 seconds inside the house, then in the back courtyard when nobody's out there, then in the front yard when nobody's out there, and eventually we're gonna be able to do it when we're, uh, oh, one step I forgot to go over, on walks. Every once in a while, stop, focus. At first, you're gonna stop and do it. After a while, you're just gonna say focus. He looks up at you as you're walking, you're gonna go towards him and keep on doing that until you get to 20 seconds. The key is you wanna be able to get on a walking inside, backyard, front yard, and then walking 20 seconds in every capacity before you try to use it when there are other dogs around. In the meantime, if you're running a dog, use the turn technique that we just went over off camera outside. Um, now, if you see another dog coming, asking him to sit while the other dog's at a distance can also help him settle down. Now, he has a buddy uh, French Bulldog that lives nearby that came and visited. And normally when they come in, they come in like they're just, it's a Tasmanian, a couple of Tasmanian devils. I went through a door cleaning exercise, which is another thing that guardians should do. And for that, make sure you call or text one another. It's helpful if you have the person in on it with you and they text you ahead of time so you can wash your hands, turn down the stove, and you're not frazzled when somebody catches you by surprise at the door. Um, put the painter's tape down on the floor and so you know exactly where that line is and practice going to the door. Usually within about 12 to 15 times, the dog will start waiting in the line anytime somebody comes to the door. Um, and then when, they get, when the Frenchie comes over to, to play, they should come in, that dog should sit, he should be sitting and relaxed before we let them off leash to play together so we achieve a nice calm energy. And because of that, they were nice and relaxed and one of the guardians said she was impressed because he actually laid down on the floor while she was there before he got a chance to mess with her. Uh, and that's what we want. We want the dog to develop hesitation and self-control. Chill, he just laid down. Um, for the dog beds, remember to toss those treats and say Cabo or whatever the words, maybe Jamaica is the one in the back there, but come up with fun, unique command words. Um, and for other things as well, um, especially when we have a dog with his sort of issues, it, it gets a little tense. So if we can bring some levity in the situation, that can really help. Uh, let me see, uh, on walks, remember to use the five rules for structure walk, and we're gonna use a special twist of the, mar of the leash with the martingale instead of using a harness. Um, so the rule number one, he's always gonna be on your right side unless you guys decide to change it to your left. Um, rule number two is your arms going straight down, loosey-goosey. If you're putting any tension on the leash or pulling or you're holding it up, you're putting tension on the leash and it's gonna cause him to pull. So let your arm go nice and relaxed, never any tension on the leash unless you're correcting. Correction should be done with a quick pop up and then immediately down. That's how fast it should be. Now, because the leash is short, really you're only gonna have to just use a hand flick. Um, but the idea is to correct him before he does the, uh, uh, before he gets out in front. If he goes behind you and he lags behind, let your arm go limp and just keep walking. Don't pull, ever pull him from behind. You only correct when he tries to go out in front. Um, let me see, the last two rules, no s stopping and sniffing. He can sniff as long as he's walking, but if he stops to sniff and you stop, he's driving. So when you're walking, if he stops to sniff, let your arm go dead and keep walking. His job is to pay attention to you, not your job to pay attention to him. Rule number five is no marking. We let him pee before the walk and at the end of the walk, but not on the walk because every place he pees on is his territory in his mind. Uh, let me see, what else? Um, if you do have an opportunity, like we met a couple dogs on a walk, if we can get them, the focus exercise is really gonna be your friend. So really focus and emphasize that, uh, <laughs> focus on the focus. Um, I'd like to, both guardians practicing that with him twice a day, about 12 to 15 treats each focus exercise and do it throughout the day, and ideally try to get him to sleep between training sessions. Dogs file away what they learn while they sleep. Um, also, always end on a good one. If he starts getting frustrated and you get frustrated, he's not gonna wanna do the exercise afterwards. So make sure that you end on a good one. If he starts to get frustrated, you start to get frustrated, get a good one in there and then quit, and then make sure you play with him and do something positive so he has a positive association with it. Also, before you take him to walks, or if you have guests come over, or if you take him to work, if we play a game of fetch with him, or take him for a long walk, we can set him up for success by burning off his excess energy. Uh, he's gonna, it's not gonna fix the problem, it's gonna be easier to, fix, uh, to deal with fixing the problem. Um, meal time, we didn't really get a chance to go through this, but dogs eat in the order of their rank. So what I do is I eat something first, then I give the dog permission to eat after I'm done. Um, does he eat everything right away or does he a slow eat? He, okay, is he, he doesn't leave anything? Okay, cool. Now if he eats too fast, one of the things you can do is put hot water in with his dry kibble. 
Uh, I put about three pints, I have a Dalmatian, about three or four pints of hot water. He's got to spend five minutes drinking the water first before he can get to the food. And it's slow. he used to eat so fast he would throw up. Now I can feed him regular food and he just eats at a regular pace. It's not too slow, it's not too fast. So one thing you might want to consider when you do that, make sure it's hot water, not so hot that it burns him, but the temperature of more, is more important to dogs than the taste. Also, because he's a little bit gassy, I would look for a food that's grain free. Something else I forgot to go over fully, what I do is I pick a brand. I feed my dogs Origin and, uh, and uh, Kana. And so what I do is I pick uh, a brand like Origin and then each bag I get a different flavor. So first one might be salmon, second one might be chicken, next one might be poultry, next one might be beef, might, one might be something else. And when you do that, the first day it should be 25% of, uh, of the new food with 75% of the old food, then 50-50 and then 75% of the uh, new food and 25% of the old food. If you do that, that'll stop them from getting gas. Make sure it's grain free. Also make sure it doesn't have any meal in it. Meal is the undesirable part of an animal. So if it's lamb and rice, the very first ingredient should be lamb. Dog ingredient lists have to be done in the percentage of uh, quantity uh, uh, in the food. So it, lamb meal is like the anus and the eyeballs. So if it's lamb meal is the first thing they list, it's not very good quality food. So find one that agrees with the system. A lot of pet stores will let you buy small bags. Find a bag that he did, he's not gassy with for a couple days, and then if that's the one that he seems to respond to, then you pick that brand and give a different uh, uh, flavor each time you buy a new bag. Uh, we gave him a bully stick. He wasn't that interested because we went into other things, but bully sticks uh, dogs really like. I'm betting he will like this. Um, also, we talked about getting an eye fetch. If you have a dog that likes to fetch what he loves to fetch, Fetch him before you have guests come over. Like I said, fetch him before you go for a walk. Fetch him before you take him to work. That will make it a lot easier. And let me know if you want me to set up a session. We could set up a session, teach him to do the eye fetch. We have a nice long hallway here. You put it right there. He could play fetch all day long with himself and he's gonna be uh, easier to deal with dog. Uh, let me see. Uh, we went over petting with a purpose and passive training. Um, really, he's a good dog, but he definitely, uh, the two techniques that are above, one is counter conditioning. We did that with the child out in the backyard, but we could also do it in the house with guests, because when I, we were doing the counter conditioning, I was running around him and he was not interested. The, the first video that we have, the one after the entry, uh, where the guardian is getting in between him, you can use that one, it stops him, but it was nowhere near as effective as the, as the counter conditioning. So I would really try to recreate having guests come over and practice the counter conditioning. Doing that in concert with enforcing all the rules and structure should help flip the leader follower dynamic so he doesn't think it's his job to correct the humans. Uh, or protect his humans from guests and people he meets on the street. Now, if he continues having problems with dogs on walks after about a month, let me know. If we do the session for the fetch, we can. there's another step that we can add into the focus exercise. We'll add that in if we need to. A lot of dogs we don't need to. Once we change the leader follow dynamic, it fixes the problem. Um, now, if you have questions or problems, do not hesitate. I assume if I don't hear from you, things are going great. I want you to call me or text me if there are questions. Um, I'd rather you text me too much than not enough. I'll tell you if it becomes too much. Um, but the sooner you text me, the faster it is usually to fix the problem. All right, uh, Moose, he's crashed out. This is Moose Roadmap to Success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog, only sometimes you mean it.